have a look at this data with me. Okay. Now, if you have a look at what this data is about, uh, this is like a year worth of um, rain recorded in the city. By the way, just a quick question, rhetorical question. I hope some of you know the answer, but maybe some of you have never even thought about it before. Um, rain is like, it's a volume, right? Like you have, you can put rain into a cup or a, or a container, that kind of thing. Why is it, I don't answer if you know, it's just interesting. Why is it that rain is measured in millimeters? Who decided that? Why is it millimeters and not say millimeters cubed? That's what volume is about, right? Anyway, just an interesting question for you to ponder. When you have a look at this data, okay? We've looked at bar charts and we've looked at line graphs this morning. Out of those two, if, I, if you had to choose one of those, which would be a better choice, do you think, for this particular data? Line. line. I'll probably go with the line graph. Why might that be the choice that we make? So you can see the trend of rain. Yeah, good. Um, there's, there's, you've got both factors in your favor, right? Number one, you're like, oh, I've got some more rainy months and some less rainy months, and I want to see like from month to month what's the comparison. Uh, and secondly, this is, this is just chronological data, right? So maybe I want to work out what's happening like halfway between April and May, and I can work out that trend. So, great, a line graph makes sense. But I want to go a little bit further on that. You might recall I gave you that um, Monday to Friday share price, and it was going up and down, all that kind of thing. This is January to December, right? So you have a whole year, and presumably, in most places, um, something like rain is seasonal, yeah? Like you get the, um, well in this case, interesting, I, I associate spring with rain, yeah. um, which looks like we're in a weird place. Or maybe this is like Northern Hemisphere. Anyway, you've got rain that comes at particular times in the year, and you've got dry periods at particular times in the year. So it makes sense that after here, you just whip right back down to January, and you'd expect a very similar pattern, okay? So being that, rather than starting from one point and ending in another, your end point is kind of like where you started, right, December to January. We represent our line in a circular form, okay? Now it's called a radar graph. Maybe you want to write this down as your heading. It's called a radar graph because in aircraft and other people who use radar, right, um, you're in the center and you send out like this uh, radio pulse and then it bounces back to you. So here's you in the middle and you get something that looks like this, which tells you, oh, how far away is stuff? So this is kind of what a radar display looks like. So that's what it's named after, okay? Now, you don't need to draw this bit, but when we're doing a line graph, you sort of do a vertical axis and a horizontal axis and then off you go putting in your data and all that kind of thing, okay? Now, the horizontal axis and the vertical axis are both here, but they're oriented very differently, obviously. The most important part is right there at the middle, okay? This is our origin. So this is like this spot over here, okay? This is like rainfall zero and time zero, so January, okay? On here, I'm going to ask you in a minute when you replicate this, to put on our, a vertical line here. And this vertical line represents our vertical axis that we would normally have, okay? Now pause with me, again, think back if you were drawing a line graph. What do you think would be a suitable step, a suitable increment to go up each time? Two. No. Two? Four. Two, four, six, eight, ten. <laughs> I, I'm going to go a bit bigger than that. I reckon 20. ten or twenty would be fine, okay? Ten or twenty. Now, you can see... It's pretty easy. If I say I wanted to do 10, I'm going to have to go up to 80. Yeah? So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and there will be my mark. Okay? It's fine. You don't need to apologize. On here, it's pretty easy to make lots of extra markings. Okay? But on a radar graph, it's actually quite hard to draw. You guys can, you're welcome to borrow compasses from me, surely. It will make it considerably easier, rather than trying to freehand it, as I did. But generally speaking, as you can see, it gets pretty busy pretty fast. I'm going to go with, someone suggested 20, okay? So here on my vertical scale, this will be 0 in the middle, then 20, 40, 60, and 80, okay? Now, instead of just going from left to right, as my normal line graph does, right, I am going to be going round the circle. So this first line here, this is January, right? This is my start point. So I'm going to look and I'm going to say, well, January is 68 degrees, so it's something like 
something like that. It's a bit hot. It's less than halfway between 60 and 80. And then I'm going to have to go all the way around the circle with an extra line for each one of my months. Okay, so here goes February. Um, I'm just thinking about, I haven't actually measured this out. Think about it. Um, think back to your sector graph thing, right? How many gaps am I going to need to have between all of my lines going up? They're called radio. Say that again. Like a clock. Yeah, so I've got 12, right? So a clock starts at 12, and then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 here. So therefore, I guess I'd have January. February, I'm going to have one, two, and then three would be over here, right? So you can see I can complete these all up, and eventually, I won't complete it right now. I'm going to get all of these things together, etc. Okay, all the way around. Each time, it's kind of like a new axis, but because they're not vertical anymore, they're not vertical anymore, because they're going along a radius of the circle, we call these radial axes. So that's probably worth writing down as well. Okay? And I have a different radial axis for each one of the months that I've got, or days, or whatever kind of thing is on my vertical axis. Okay. In the same way, I'm going to keep on measuring. So let's see, 74, um, that's going to be a bit above halfway. 55, where's that going to be? That's, there's 50 there, so 55, something like that. The last one I've drawn is April. What have we got? 50, bang on. So that's halfway. Okay, so you can see I'm going to have to complete this all the way around, just like with my line graph, I'm going to connect the dots, right? So I'm going to have something like this, and then this, and then this. Like okay, so this looks like a spider web, especially when, um, if you recall um, a couple of exercises ago, when you did stem and leaf plots, right? A stem and leaf plot starts with the stem, and leaves go this way, okay? But if you've got like two groups of data, like say two teams or two classes, you'll sometimes have the stem in the middle, leaves going this way, and you know, like an actual plant, leaves going the other way as well, because you're comparing the two. I could do the same thing here. I could have the rainfall in one part of the world, and then I could have rainfall in another part of the world, and I'm just doing comparison. So I could have another lion sneaking its way around. Okay. So this is what my radar graph looks like. I've finished the example I've given you.